Hello and welcome back everyone, it's Hayden, and this week I have something special for you. The first episode of The Pix Fix. The idea of The Pix Fix is that they're going to be shorter pixel art uh, related videos that don't necessarily have a central theme like the weekly pixels episodes do. The concept for this first episode of The Pix Fix uh, came to me a little while ago. I'm pretty interested in creating uh, like simple chiptune uh, type music and I found a really interesting, super fun to use, free, uh, simple like music making program that's really visual. Uh, it's called Sunvox. I'll be uploading videos of the songs I make with that program in the future, I'm sure. And that was kind of the whole idea behind this PixFix episode. Uh, I wanted to make a logo that I could show for the songs that I make. Um, and what I came up with is this sweet sort of spacey waveform type uh, image with like the logo sound space in the center. And I think that looks and sounds really cool. And here is a quick time lapse of that about two hour process it took for me to get this done. All right, so right off the bat, I'm messing with the symmetry options for a sprite, which allow you to draw on one half of the canvas and then it mirrors your drawings on the other half which allows me to create this really nice symmetrical waveform uh, shadow. And I was toying around with it a bit to kind of make it look nice and smooth. Um, this, I haven't really used this tool so much in the past, so this is kind of a fun learning experience. And like I said earlier, the, the idea was I was going to have a waveform uh, like, like object, and then the text of like sound space in the middle. And then I ended up going with a uh, little like space nebula background behind the waveform. Right here you can see my roundabout way of deleting every other uh, line to give it that more unique looking waveform uh, look, I guess. And then I went through and tried to gradient it and realized it wouldn't work unless I had it fully solid, so I undid that, created the gradient, with the lightest part in the middle, I knew I wanted that. However, I quickly learned that no matter what color I had the logo sound space, it was really quite difficult to see, um, just to, to read the sound space in front of a background that was such a harsh transition like this, and made it kind of hard to look at. So that had to go, and I ended up... Oh, actually, I didn't do that quite yet. I guess first I decided to sketch out my own sound space logo because I didn't like the font that I had and I was like I can just make my own and it'll look better. So here I do like a simple one line uh, sketch of the letters for sound space to get an idea of spacing and how large the letters can or need to be. And then I go through and fatten them up a bit, give them a little bit of style. I wanted it to be kind of futuristic looking, like a little, like, with sound space, like, be, like space being like a theme in this. So I made them kind of rounded, but kind of modern looking. I think it turned out really well. You can see right here, I'm... Trying to figure out what to do about the readability problem. So I end up going and undoing all of my work on the, uh, the waveform, just to fill it in once again so I can give myself a background to work with essentially. And what I did is I expanded the selection around the sound space and then made it look a little more mo a little more uh, natural and not quite so rectangular. That way, no matter what the waveform looked like, this part behind the letters would be solid and readable. And that ended up working out really well. So here you can see I've pieced it back together and now I'm just gonna go and edit the uh, the shadow to be a little more natural looking and not so rectangular. Yeah, if I would if I were to do this again I'd and had a better idea of how I were how I were to do it and what I was looking for, this wouldn't have taken nearly as long, but I ended up undoing all my work countless times because I didn't like the way it worked and had to restart and restart and restart. And the coloring process was a huge pain too. I should have created a gradient from the beginning and then just drew everything over that, but, you know, 20, hindsight 2020, it still worked out in the end and it turned out really well. It's 
So right here I'm creating a gradient that is um, not quite so gradual, like the built-in gradient thing in uh, Ace Sprite. This way I can still have it change in color, but just not every single pixel. I want to change every few pixels. And I decided on like a sort of a neon green to blue transition of color from the inside to outside of the waveform, and I think that looks pretty nice. Um, I thought the inside wasn't bright enough, so I ended up putting a, a little oh, two pixel height white in the inside. And then I adjusted the spacing of the transition of the colors slightly so that it uh, allowed for more colors and allowed for the uh, transition to blue to be quicker so that I can have a little more color in the project. Yeah, I saturated the colors as it expanded from the middle. Give it a pretty nice looking, uh, looking uh, color. I'm just putting little finishing touches on it. I think it, this is basically it. Oh yeah, redoing the colors yet again. Try to find that right ratio of of a color change. Go from a really light green to a dark blue or darkish blue. And now this is the second portion of the project, and I uh, I have actually never drawn space before so this is interesting I ended up using a uh, a tutorial like gif that I found on uh, the pixel art subreddit and uh, I'll link that in the uh, the comment or the uh, description below but and it'd been incredibly useful for me to figure out how to do this and it worked out pretty damn well I think so right here I'm working on getting the two basic shapes of the uh, or I had the two basic shapes of the nebula that I wanted and now I'm just kind of giving them a little bit of uh, flavor. So I'm making them look all like swirly and pokey and whatnot to give them a little more natural of a look rather than just a blob. Once I've got that all done, I uh, try to color it. I end up adjusting the background colors after I finish this project because they were too just just not quite right, too dark or too too ta too saturated. And it looks much better than the, the time lapse will let it be, but because I didn't record my edits afterwards. But the basic idea here is now I'm adding some lighter spots into the nebula, which are supposed to be like solar systems or um, yeah, just solar systems like mini galaxies. Just trying to make it look somewhat natural, not super blocky. That looks pretty good. Get a couple touch-ups here and there, some smaller bits. And now I'm gonna start putting a few little stars down. And there's like various uh, sizes of stars that this little tutorial um, showcased. And I, I took some of those concepts and adjusted the colors and some of the sizes and maybe left a few out and created a couple of my own just sort of fill in that blank space. And I knew that the, the middle was going to be taken up by the sound wave and the um, the shadow behind the words, which you wouldn't be able to see through at all. So I didn't bother putting any stars in the middle because you wouldn't have seen it. You can see right here, I'm just checking uh, like my visible areas. And so I wanted to make sure I had uh, brightish stars in the lighter spots of the nebula, which are signifying like the more densely populated by stars planets, uh, portions of the nebula, and on the outside I had some nice big stars, and you can see some, some color correction here, which I ended up changing yet again because I made it too dark, but that's, I mean, that's about it. I ended up going with that orange text on the greenish background, on the purplish space background, and it worked out pretty damn nice. All right here, I'm just kind of rotating stuff to see if I can fill more of the dead space, but I ended up leaving it the way it was. It looked better, I think, just the way I had it. All right, now let's take uh, one last look at the uh, final product. Uh, this is the adjusted, color corrected uh, version that I ended up with. In the future, I might go through and find a way to animate the sound wave, unless I can't find a simple way to do that, in which case it'll just be a huge time sink and probably not worth it, but it would be cool if I could figure something out. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, expect to see more of these The Pix Fix episodes. This is the first one. Um, yeah, hope you guys like it. I had a good time making it, as frustrating as it always is, but uh, I learned a lot, and I'm pretty happy with the results. So uh, thanks for sticking around, and uh, I'll see you next time.